This is Big Pine. Here we have the town of Independence, California. We're headed down to a little spot on the Owens River, just outside Independence. Check it out. Hopefully it's not flooded. Well, this is the Lower Owens River project. And this is the Owens River. I actually saw some fish in here, uh, about a foot long. And they look like some type of maybe a sunfish. There's two of them. I thought it'd be flooded for sure. I mean, it's high water, but it's not flooding. I really wouldn't drink this water or go swimming in here. My gut feeling tells me that it's got a lot of cow manure in it and it's probably all kinds of bacteria. It's kind of a brown, tea colored color. I don't think I'd want to even get a little bit of that in my mouth. But there's still wildlife here and there, there are fish in here. Like I said, I saw two healthy, good sized fish. I'm not sure what type, they weren't trout. Some type of, type of a warm water fish. We're uh, four miles from the town of Independence in Inyo County, California. It's got that froth on it. I just don't trust water with the froth on it that's brown like that. What a contrast to that crystal clear mountain water we just saw. It's like tea water. Like coffee. There's Mount Whitney, the highest peak in the Sierra range, over 14,000 feet, and the highest peak in the lower 48. I can't believe I'm driving right across the middle of Owens Lake on the south end right now, just north of Alantia, California. So I'm going on a bike ride with these guys here. There's three uh, guys and one gal, and they're going on a 50 mile bike ride around Owens Lake. I'm not gonna go the whole way because I don't have that much time today. Owens Lake.
So what's interesting over here in Owens Lake is they've got a pretty big crew of about nine semi trucks and they've been hauling gravel and really hustling because they're trying to make some changes because this uh, Owens Lake is used to managing the lake uh, during dry years and they're preparing for a flood. So they're trying to pull out as much uh, infrastructure equipment that they can save that they can salvage because the big snow melt's coming. Shots. <laughs> <laughs> this is a huge undertaking for the crew that works out here. Like I said, they've got nine trucks and they've got a hard working crew, they've been working around the clock, it sounds like, to prepare for the big snow melt. And uh, who knows how it's going to turn out. But like I said, they're going from uh, basically managing water to preparing for who knows how much water is going to be coming down through here. That snow is just starting to melt just about now. So uh, it's mid-May, mid to end of May right now. So they've been trying to prepare kind of like uh, Tulare Lake. See where we are. And you can see where we're going. I need to get caught up with them. <laughs> wow, look at the size of this pipe right here. Okay, so yeah, uh, my name is Hunter. Uh, I'm here with you know group of cyclists. I run the this group bike ride called the City of Los Angeles Bureau of Infrastructure Inspections, which is a uh, at infrastructure.la on Instagram. Right. So like this is like a special ride because you know we're like way we're 150 miles north of LA right now. Right. But this is still City of LA like. Department, uh, Department of Water and Power. Well, of course, this is where you get your water from. You guys are from LA, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it comes through the, down the LA Aqueduct and right. it comes down our faucet. But since we like been taking so much water over the decades from the Owens River, the, like the Owens Lake doesn't really exist anymore, which caused a lot of dust problems, right. pollution, like right. all across America and the world, even. Right, right. Um, so we have to like put a little bit of water back in, just to make sure the dust. Doesn't yeah. Get blown around. Yeah. yeah. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. How many? How many times have you guys come out here? Uh, I. I mean, this is like the first time as a group. Oh, okay. I've been out here like a few times. A few times already. I did this exact ride like last year by myself. Right. Yeah. It's very fun. Like no cars. Yeah. Um, like very very flat. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, I'm like, jealous. I'm jealous because you're young. And you got the coolest shirt, man. That is like. <laughs> I'd love to wear that at the rodeo, I tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for, good for <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm going to turn around over here, right from the middle of Owens Lake, and head on behind me. Have a good one. Can you leave me now? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. I uh, hope you have a good day. And it's beautiful out here. Have a good trip. It was fun uh, hanging out with you guys. Yeah. All right. Ciao.
can tell that it gets windy out here. See the rocks on top of the lids of those? That's impressed in how much bigger Owens Lake is than what I thought it was. But I know for myself, my own family, my grandfather used to talk about Owens Lake. They used to come down here to get fruit. I think over by Bartlett, they'd get uh, pears and all kinds of fruit for fruit salads and canning and so forth. And boy, my grandpa was sure upset when they uh, turned Owens Lake into a big alkali dust flat. And he lived through all the different water wars and all that kind of stuff. So Anyway, but I didn't realize how big it was, and they're really doing a, a good job, a, a good effort to manage it. I'm impressed. So I'm not stuck out here. I bailed out because I've got another di different adventure to do today. And uh, they're going 50 miles, is what they said. I could do it, and I kind of wish I could. But anyway, they're over there somewhere in the wild blue yonder. So you can see how big some of these uh, flats are in here, and they manage them differently. Some are freshwater, some are saltwater, some have brine shrimp for migratory birds, some don't. Some are freshwater for the freshwater birds. They're all managed a different way. There's even, I guess, some duck hunters that have a little section that they manage. And so this is going to have a huge impact on Owens Lake. Uh, right now, for the past many, many years, they've been uh, trying to keep the toxic dust down. And so they're really scrambling because the big snow melt is coming from the storm train uh, that came in last winter. Look at the color of this one, it kind of looks brown. The one on the other side is kind of a blue color. And you got this one's kind of blue. This one's full of rocks. They're all managed differently for the different types of wildlife and bird life that inhabits them. Well, I've got to head on back and go across. I'm in, right in the middle of Owens Lake right now. This is a new type of a berm that they've been working on. It's for flood control. They're getting ready for a deluge. That's what this is. This is something new. Let's go take a look at this. New flood abatement device here. Apparently they're building quite a few of these and they're working as fast as they can go. So like I said, this is all 
flood abatement right here. This is something new for Owens Lake. They're getting ready for all that snow melt that's coming. And uh, they're off today, but they're usually working their butts off over here, I guarantee you. Getting ready, doing what they can do, whatever's humanly possible, that's what they're doing over here. Look at all that alkali on the lake bottom. One of the fellows I was riding with this morning, he said that the fellow who's in charge of this operation said something to the effect of, when that dust first started blowing off this lake when it dried up years ago, it went all the way around the world to Japan and it caused some damage in Japan. I'm not sure if it was a cropland or what kind of damage it caused, if it was a health risk or what. But even back then, I think the fine, they were saying the fine was, I'm not sure the exact number, but something along the lines of like $10,000 a day that Japan was fined in the United States for the dust coming off of Owens Lake. I could see how a person could get lost out here in all these levees. I'm out of water and it's getting it's starting to get warm up a little bit, but I'm almost there. I know where I'm going, so I'm good. So interesting, like I said, this, this lake is so much bigger than what I ever thought. I've seen it on maps and so forth. It's a lot bigger when you actually get on it. To me, those crags, they look just like the crags that are over in that mountain over there. Uh, south of Mount Grant that I went up, the uh, Angel's Portal Vortex. It's just the same, but these it's just bigger. It's just bigger, that's all. Well, I really wish them well, and I wish them luck with what's coming with this big snow melt from this unprecedented historical amount of snow that we got in the Sierra this winter. And uh, I think it'll be very interesting to see how much gold is stirred up from all the creeks and the mother load. And it'll also be somewhat uh, concerning to see how Owens Lake fares and also Tulare Lake and also uh, the Kern River and the uh, San Joaquin Valley and even up in the Sacramento River Valley and all those drainages from the Sacramento Valley and the San Joaquin Valley. And uh, hopefully that snow doesn't melt too quick and hope everybody's gonna be okay. So I wish, I wish everybody in California well and good luck with this snow melt. Still got a little bit of a bike ride to go, but it's still kind of cool, nice breeze. There's no dust, it's really nice, it's not hot. That's the town of Olancha, over to the right. Still have to go around that bend right there.
Lake. Passing through the little hamlet of Keeler near Cerro Gordo. Well, there they are. I met him on the other side. See you later. <laughs> well, he said they're only open once a year. Heading right across the road over here with Matthew, and he really has a passion for, you know, uh, showing uh, what's going on with this lake. There's two sides to every story, and, uh, you know, we need water and so forth, but at the same time we need wildlife and we don't need toxic dust and everything. It's a fine line with these natural resources, and this is a person here that has a concern about uh, Owens Lake. Well, also, Owens Lake's just such a fantastic kind of expressive presence. It says a lot on its own. We just mm -hmm. have to tune our receptors to hearing what it's saying to us. And what this lake says is things that kind of blow your mind, you know? Things like, here I am. I used to have a, you know, like a lake like you're used to, you know, with a bunch of water and shoreline, boats. And then this one slowly dried up when Los Angeles took the water from the valley. And it became a different kind of lake, a dust bowl. And then the Department of Water and Power put this infrastructure back on the lake to make it less dusty. And they spent about $2 billion reconstructing a lake into this strange kind of futuristic cyborg kind of lake. And they created, incidentally, all these amazing structures and colors and formations. Interesting. That you don't see anywhere else in the world. Huh. So they... One of the byproducts of this, what some people have called it sort of ecological disaster in some ways, it's largely been mitigated and a lot cleaner than it used to be, is that you've got a whole new voc vocabulary of right. forms. Uh, uh -huh. The lobby of our interpretive structure. The, okay. And so there's someone's lake. Right. This big thing in the middle of the valley. And these are old topographic maps, but they uh -huh. show a lot of interesting cultural features and right so, so basically the shoreline of the lake you know used to historically be kind of like that and then the department of water and power decided that this area was where a lot of the dust was coming from and so they re-engineered this part of the lake like that okay and then what's in the middle uh -huh. is still the place where the water flows up into right the river so this lake here is really usually dry almost a hundred percent of the time dry just some little puddles of really super brine material mm -hmm. but right now it's almost full to the rim again and it's if it gets too much fuller it'll begin spilling into two billion dollars of infrastructure right over 20 years. right right but the community is all up and down or all impacted by this and sure but for the most part this is a problem that as it's uh, yeah. downwinders when the dust, but the, uh, and some hardship, I guess, to the ratepayers in Los Angeles. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. We do exhibits in this space. Okay. So, okay. so it's it's about this one is about uh, the sort of fountains of Owens Lake. Hmm. Interesting. Fountains of Owens Lake. Oh. Wow. Okay. So here's, I, said, I think I saw this one. Fountain exhibit is just kind of interpretive. It's just of interest, the different types of fountains that are found at Owens Lake. It's almost an expression of art in some, to some respects. It's whatever you wanna take from it. I saw some of these when I was out there this morning. One of my favorite kind of maps is you know, what they some people call land status maps, and what produced these, this by the Bureau of Land Management, and it shows generally who owns the land in terms of the government entities. So green is Forest Service, you know, yellow is Bureau of Land Management, pink is military, uh, and then this is all the National Park Service, the uh, Death Valley. Right. So the, the, these colors you can see mean that this area is almost all government land, which means public land. Right. 
And then there's this Owens Lake, which is technically state land because it was a navigable waterway when this California became a state. And so technically this is, even though it's dried up and you uh -huh. can't really take a boat across it anymore, but you could when they decided to create a state. And so it's all state land. And then this white stuff is private land. And white private, even in Owens Valley, means almost entirely Department of Water and Power. So even though it's white, Los Angeles, it, yeah, it's Los Angeles, the city that owns this land, for the most part, about ninety percent mm -hmm. of private okay. land in the valley is, is owned by the city. Of That's Los a Angeles. lot. Yeah. So you can see some of the mod monitoring that they've been doing here. Here's the some pictures of the dust cams for Owens Lake. That was a big problem in the past. Avocets. We saw some of those this morning. Here's a model of the uh, Owens Lake Dust Control Project, 1998 to 2018. So the Owens Lake is basically a 100 square mile lake bed that's that big. Right. And DWP engineers this area, uh -huh. which is roughly 30% or so, the most emissive, meaning dust emissive okay. portion has all been engineered and there's a berm that runs along the edge and the Owens River flows in here right from the north yeah, okay from the north and it gets creates I one little delta in here right and then it goes through the, the narrows and mm -hmm. goes into the big remaining unengineered part of the lake right and that's the pool okay and so that's where the brine pool. the extra water uh -huh. coming down the aqueduct and through the river uh-huh is only go can go one place other than Los Angeles right and that's here oh and if that fills up a little too much right then it starts spilling into this yes. and there's two billion dollars of infrastructure oh my goodness i that, believe it too i've been seeing it a little it. damaged if the water gets too high in, in the brine pool right so they got to keep that from happening by diverting water and right. getting as much sort of forward based into reservoirs and things as they so can so the battle line for the flooding is basically like right along here exactly yep Okay. And and right along here uh -huh. too. In the north. Okay. Yeah, because this is oh, a I see that. connected. Yeah. No, no. What's what? What is this? Uh, what's the the value of this? Uh, is that commercial value or what? Why is there so much in infrastructure there That's in place? That's to basically reduce dust. So dust abatement. Yes, okay. And they have different measures. They use gravel. They use shallow flooding. They use all kinds of different engineering mm -hmm. sur uh, surfaced right re-engineered. So who, who pays for this, it. Matthew? The uh, People of Los Angeles who oh, pay water bills. Okay, and, okay. Uh, so that's uh, DWP is uh -huh. you know since uh, around 2000 they've right. been working on this infrastructure to okay. uh, reduce the the dust. Right. For up to that point, and not too much, just a few years ago, it really was still the biggest point source of particulate. Right. Aspirable air pollution in Whew. the United States. Yeah. So, Meaning Goodness, it was, it was stuff you know, mm -hmm. downwind. You, you and I heard it. it. I heard it traveled a long way, even around the world. Yeah, I guess you can kind of do this kind of testing of it and mm -hmm. determine how far it's migrated. And right, it gets down to right. You know, certainly to Los Angeles and San Diego and further out. Yeah, east too. So it's uh, gets around. 